To kick off our economic undercard, we head straight to the White House and Tyler Goodspeed, acting chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors. Tyler, welcome. You'll be followed by Joe Biden supporter Leo Hendry. You will both get equal time. But Tyler, with just 12 days to go, let's look at a new Fox News poll. Here's what it shows. President Trump is trailing in three key battleground states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. He is holding on to a slight lead in Ohio. Uh, we do know that people vote their pocketbooks. These are states that President Trump won four years ago. What are we to interpret about the Trump economy that, if the polls are right, doesn't seem, at least right now, to be resonating with voters in at least three of the four key battleground states? Well, I think it's certainly, it is certainly worthwhile to cast our minds back just a few months ago. Uh, in 2019, the median American household experienced real income gains that were more than five uh, more than five times cumulatively over the three years through 2019, more than five times total income gains over eight years of the preceding administration. In one year alone, 2019, the median American household experienced real income gains that were more than eight years entirely under the preceding administration. And I think what's especially telling in this, this census data is that inequality was declining. So for two years in a row following landmark tax reform in 2017, by pretty much any measure, income, wage, or wealth inequality, uh, inequality was declining in the United States, and that was a reversal of the preceding eight mm -hmm. years. And so I think right now we are focused very much on returning the U.S. economy as quickly as possible to the state of affairs that, that prevailed on the eve of this pandemic. I'm glad you bring up people right now who have in the past really felt some benefits from the GOP tax uh, hike, uh, the tax cut rather, which of course was very much promoted by President Trump. But right now we are looking at still a big chunk of Americans who are unemployed. First time jobless claims came out today for the week and they actually were better than expected. This is the number you want to see come down. So we saw it come in, uh, you know, we can put it up on the screen, 756,000. The expectation was for 787,000. But gig workers filed 1.1 million. So that is certainly a group of people who are desperate for help, but they also are exposed to problems with health care because, as you know, they work for themselves. They are gig economy workers, independent contractors. We're still waiting on a health care plan. Tell me what we can hear from the president on that. Well, first of all, yes, the, the unemployment insurance claims are trending in the right direction, but the levels are still far too high. And that is why we are very focused and negotiating in earnest for a phase four piece of legislation that would include a reload of the Paycheck Protection Program that would include an employee expanded employee retention tax credit and that would include among other things the eco, a second round of economic impact payments for, for american households and enhanced unemployment insurance for for americans who may have lost their jobs during during this this economic crisis um, but but the, the the trends are are certainly moving in the in the right direction and in terms of of health care uh, let me just say that that at the end of the day under the president's economic policy agenda we have observed lower drug prices, lower insurance premiums, and increased private insurance coverage. And that is the result of a, of a, of a plan and an administration policy that has promoted increased choice and increased competition. And moving forward, I think the, the key piece is going to be building upon the, the executive order that the president signed that maintains complete protection for those with pre-existing conditions. Well, we've been waiting on that for a while. And uh, listen, we just work on facts here at the Claim and Countdown. Here's what the president said July 19th. I want you to listen to it. It was on Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace. And then we can talk about this repetitive promise that we would see a health care plan in two weeks. And he's promised that as far back as 2017. Let's listen. We're signing a health care plan within two weeks, a full and complete health care plan. We don't have that yet. I know you're not the Health and Human Services Director, but this is a huge economic issue. It is the biggest nut, along with tuition and food, that people are desperate to have more of. Well, I think that, that folks should look at the White House website. Uh, there's, there was a release on September 24th, which lists 
uh, over a dozen provisions of actions that the president has already taken or will take, and these include the expansion of the availability of affordable health care options like association health plans, like health reimbursement arrangements, and other short-term limited duration plans that, as I said, provide greater choice and greater competition. And that is why we have seen in the data increased health ins private health insurance coverage and lower insurance premiums in addition to what we've been doing for three years at the Food and Drug Administration un under, uh, un under the, the commissioners there to expedite approval of new generic entries so that we get increased competition in the provision of drugs and that has resulted in unprecedented relative price declines in, in, the, in the prices of, of pharmaceutical products. Tyler, we're going to leave it there because we are giving equal time on this economic undercard to the other side as well. But it's going to be fair and balanced all throughout the hour. Tyler, good speed. Great to see you. Thank you for joining us.